Hi everyone! So today I am going to do a empties video. I've got this big basket of everything I've used beauty wise in the last, I don't know, month or two. Gonna go through it and show you some absolute fails in here. Oh my god, I'm gonna start with the fails because I always think that's really fun. <laughs> so actually the first fail I have is a foundation by Bourjois and this is the Air Matte. And well, the first thing that really did not work for me was the color. So the color, even though this was supposed to be the fairest shade, was just like straight up orange on me. So the foundation is very orangey. It also oxidizes. So once it kind of dries down, it seems to get even more orangey. The application was not very smooth. I feel like the other bourgeois foundation that they have, like the, um, what is it called? The Healthy Mix that everyone kind of raves about. Like that one applies very smoothly and this one didn't. It was kind of hard to distribute it evenly. Um, the color aside, I don't know, it just didn't didn't really leave a nice finish. Kind of looked cakey and the fact that it was so hard to make it look even made it seem like there were patches that were very caked on and then the other areas that didn't um, you know, have enough foundation. Now the other product that I bought this on the same day, so this was a big disappointing day of bourgeois products and this is the Bourjois Rouge Edition Velvet. Now these are almost kind of like liquid lipsticks, but they're not quite as pigmented, I feel, as something like the Anastasia ones. Um, and also these are quite expensive here. Like for the same price, I could have gotten one by Anastasia Beverly Hills and gotten a much better product for the same price. This color, I thought, wow, it's so gorgeous. It's like really this deep red, like burgundy shade, perfect for fall. I have never had a product apply so streaky on my lips. I have a few of the other Rouge Edition velvets that apply really smoothly and they have a very good color payoff and they just look very velvety on the lip, on the lips, hence the name. And this one, the Grand Cru, Grand Cru number 08, um, just super, super streaky. Like I could not believe this, how patchy it was. I tried to do a second coat, it just, this product is unusable. It's unusable in my opinion. So, and the third fail for me, well, I don't know. This is this is kind of harsh. I think I can't really label this as a fail. It's more of a Julia failed <laughs> um, because this is the collection Lasting Perfection Concealer. And this on me just looks so, like the color is just, actually this is just the wrong color. Um, this is the 02 Light. So for me, this just looks so bad. Um, I think there is one that's lighter. And when I apply this, it just looks so orange. Like, you know, if it has sort of a salmon color as a concealer, that's good because it can kind of erase the dark circles. But because this is so orange, it just looks, it looks more orangey than everything else. So it just makes actually the under eye area kind of um, stand out on me. I can't really say it's a failed product just for me. This was a personal big fail for me. Okay, I have a couple things in here from H&M. I don't really know, this is not really beauty, but I thought I would mention it. So I bought a couple of these really sort of dainty necklaces at H&M. And the first one I bought broke, like after a couple years, a couple weeks of wearing it, like the chain broke immediately. I mean, these things weren't super expensive, but I'm just telling you, like don't buy these really dainty necklaces at H&M. It's a total waste of money because they're such poor quality. And then I bought another one and this was like a layered necklace. And this, I don't even know how this got so freaking tangled and Every time I wear this, because it's like one of those necklaces that has three layers and it looks really pretty, but every time I wear it, the actual change just as I'm wearing it gets so freaking tangled that it just doesn't look good. And then when I took it off, it was like all tangled and now I just, I can't really be bothered to like untangle this and ugh, this is just too fussy. Thumbs down to the, um, those little dainty necklaces by H&M. I think like the chunky ones are, are easier to, to wear, but like those dainty ones are just not worth the money. Even though they're not like super expensive, just, just don't even, just don't. So that's, uh, that's the sort of fails for me. Let's go through the rest of the things. There's probably a couple more products in here that didn't really work out. So great. Um, let's go through it. So. 
One of the products I'm getting actually rid of is the Tresemme, Tresemme Thermal Creation Thermic. Anyway, this is the heat tamer spray. And I'm getting rid of this because A, it's ancient. I've had this for years and I never used, well, I have used quite a bit of it actually. There's only like half left. Um, but I haven't used this in recent because I don't really use heat, heat products anymore that much. And then uh, also this is full of, um, silicones and as you guys know from my really long ass um, hair care video that I did a while back I just completely stopped using any products with silicones including hair protecting stuff and yeah this has lots of silicones so I've also used up one of the Swiss Opar um, dry shampoos and this is works fine it leaves um, a very white cast like a lot of shampoo uh, dry shampoos because it doesn't have any color in coloring in it. You just have to wait a while for it to settle in and then just kind of like work it through your hair if you're a brunette. But it works great. I mean, the smell is also not the most pleasant. It has a very sort of, I don't know, like men's cologne scent, something like that, like very strange, but it works. I mean, the product actually does a job and it's so inexpensive. I feel like I go through these so quickly, so I don't wanna buy something really expensive. I also used up the Joico K-Pack Reconstruct Deep Penetrating Reconstructor. This is like a leave, no, it's not a leave-in treatment. It's basically like a hair mask that you're supposed to leave in for, uh, I don't know, like five minutes or something like that, and then rinse it out. So it's a, it's a protein reconstructor for dry and damaged hair. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't really love this. I felt like, yeah, it added moisture, but it wasn't something that like blew me away. You know, it wasn't something like, wow, this is this is above and beyond. Also, this I think contains, I'm not sure. I don't think, well, I mean, I won't repurchase it anyway, but I think this might also contain silicone, so I wouldn't repurchase anyway, not ground, but um, you know, it just, I don't know, just didn't blow me away, so goodbye. Then I used up, this was uh, in one of my um, What's in My Mailbox unboxing videos. It's the Le Petit Marseillaise Aloe Vera and Calendula Lotion. This is just like a body lotion. And I used it up, it worked great. Um, I don't really know if I would buy it myself because it was just a lotion. Like there was nothing bad about it, but I prefer in the winter something a little bit more hydrating. But actually for the summer, this was really good because it was kind of a lighter texture. I used up the Wild Argan Oil Body Butter by The Body Shop. I loved this body butter. It smells so good. Um, it smells very warm, like a very warm, creamy scent without it being sort of cakey smelling, you know what I mean? Um, it just smells like the nutty kind of argan oil. Um, and yeah, super hydrating, very, very hydrating body butter. This is definitely one of my favorite body butters now. Another body butter that I just didn't get through all the way to the end, and I think it's just now kind of old, like I just need to get rid of it, it's the L'Occitane Rose Petals Ultra Rich Body Cream. This has 25% shea butter in it, and this was so rich. Um, and I think now it's just kind of gone off. Like there's a, there's a little bit left. I did use quite a bit of it. There's a little bit left along the sides. It's just gone off. Um, this was so, so rich though. This was like, I think this is not meant to be used like all over your body, maybe on just areas where you need a lot of, um, moisture, like maybe your elbows, knees or whatever. Kind of boring. This is my go-to deodorant. I always repurchase. It's the Rexona Men Maximum Protection. I feel like this is the only deodorant that I've ever tried that really keeps me dry. I use this every day. Um, got two here. I like the men's scent. It doesn't, it doesn't smell very masculine. It just smells fresh. So I don't like the women's scent deodorants. So I always find them very sweet and powdery and kind of bleh, not my thing. Aveo Med Sensitive Shampoo. So this is also silicone free. There's no color agents in here, no parabens, no mineral oils, no silicones, no soap and no alkalines. So it's made for super um, sensitive skin. And yeah, I mean, I used it up, it was fine. Um, but I've actually found a shampoo that I like better by La Roche-Posay. Um, so I probably won't repurchase this, but this was really inexpensive and it does what it promises to do. So if you have sensitive scalp, um, this might be something to look into. A nail polish remover, this is just by Co-op. <laughs> this is my local grocery store. Probably not useful to most of you, but this contains also castor oil, so it kind of leaves a little bit of an oily film, but it kind of hydrates your nails a little bit, so um, yeah, I, I like these. These are also um, without, I think they're acetone free. I'm not sure on that, but I mean, I have natural nails, so it doesn't really matter to me. One thing I'm getting rid of, and I don't even know how old this thing is. It's the St. Ives 
Okay, Swiss formula. No, it's not. This product is not made in Switzerland. This is a Canadian product. See, I really hate when products say like Swiss or like whatever country and it has nothing to do with that country. It's just, it's just to kind of sell it. Like they have the mountains on there, which doesn't even look like Swiss mountains. Ah. Um, yeah, this apricot scrub and this just, no. See, oh yeah, another hair product that I'm getting rid of is the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In product. I'm gonna put this into my pile of things to give away because maybe someone else of my friends might enjoy this, but it's a very silicone Latin um, leave-in treatment. This basically just coats your hair so it makes it look shiny, but it doesn't add anything in the way of moisture. It fools your hair into looking and behaving nicely, but you're not really doing anything good for your hair with these products. I also used up the La Roche-Posay Tolerian Cream. This is um, one of my go-to face creams that I often repurchase. Um, this, the Tolerian range by La Roche-Posay is made for people with very sensitive skin, so it doesn't contain any perfume, uh, doesn't contain any irritating pro like things. So this is a great uh, cream, just a general hydrating face cream for people with sensitive skin. The Tolerian range by La Roche-Posay, I can only say good things about it. Um, I also used up one of the um, Nivea deodorants. This is the Invisible for Black and White Anti-Perspirant. Anti and this is a spray deodorant. Um, it's supposed to not leave um, white stains on your black clothing, like if you're wearing a dress or a tank top or something, and then, you know, have those gross deodorant stains. And it actually, it did work on that sense, like it didn't leave those stains on my clothing, but the negative side is that these deodorants, like I feel like these spray deodorants just don't work that great on me, so it didn't really keep me dry. Um, so then it kind of becomes a little bit pointless. Another product that I'm getting rid of is the L'Oreal Ideal Moisture Even Tone Day Lotion. This has um, a broad spectrum sunscreen in it, SPF 25, so that part is really, really good, but it really um, irritates my eyes. So when I put on sunscreen, I like to put it around my eyes as well, and I found sunscreens that I can do that where it doesn't burn my eyes at all. And this one, I have to like really avoid the eye area. So for me, that, um, is just a hassle because then I have to use another product. I used up another package of the wipes. These are my go-to wipes. They're by Co-op. I buy them because they're really cheap. They are. Um, they have a lot of the solution on them, so they're very wet, and they have the plastic like that casing. Because a lot of wipes just have the plastic like rip-off thing, which I find that makes the wipes dry out very fast. So I always repurchase these. I have in here the BU Maxi Volume Mascara Ultra Black. This is just, the brush is so big. The brush is huge and when you pull it out, there's so much mascara that comes out. I tried this a couple times and it's just so thick and it makes your lashes, like it made my lashes so clumped together and just not attractive looking. The L'Oreal uh, Makeup Removing Waterproof Solution. So I love this eye makeup remover. It's great for removing waterproof stuff. Um, works really well, it doesn't irritate my eyes, it's very gentle on the eyes. Um, I don't know if I'll repurchase, to be honest, because I've really gotten into cleansing oils, and because I use the cleansing oils now, I don't have use for an oil-based makeup remover on top of that, because the cleansing oil gets rid of all the eye makeup as well. I also used up one of these, um, Abelin Nagellack Inferna Express, so it's a express nail polish remover. It's the kind with the, um, like a pot and then it has the foamy stuff inside and you kind of stick your finger in and then turn it around. This works super great. Um, it's, ooh, that stinks really badly. <laughs> um, this worked really, really great. It really does remove the nail polish super fast. Um, but after a certain time, you just have to replace them because the, like the color always stays in here and then like it was actually staining my nails with the, all the leftover polish in here. So you just have to kind of replace these things once in a while. And then I also used up finally this hand cream by a brand called Manufactura, which I believe is a brand that you can get in the Czech Republic. And I got this when I was in the Czech Republic. So this thing is quite old. Um, and I kind of forgot about it. This is the hand and foot cream with mint and shea butter and this is the mojito scent. So it has a lime 
mint scent. I love the scent. Um, this part, it smells really nice. Personally, I like my hand creams to be even more moisturizing. I like really, really, really thick hand creams because my skin, uh, my hands get super dry because I wash my hands very frequently. So for me, this wasn't quite moisturizing enough, but the scent was incredible. So I also um, used up this uh, this shower gel by Oibos. It's basically like a shower gel that doesn't contain anything, like soap. It doesn't contain soap. It doesn't contain perfumes. Is this again made? for people with super sensitive skin, people who maybe have like rosacea or um, what is that called, Psor psoriasis? I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. But um, you know, people have like skin allergies or something. Um, I had really, really bad eczema for a while. Again, I think this was like last winter and so this was the only thing I could really use in the shower because everything else just irritated and dried out my skin. So um, I won't repurchase because I haven't been having any of those issues and this doesn't have any scent so it doesn't really make your like it doesn't make your body smell nice after a shower. Um, so, but yeah, if you have any kind of skin issues, this is a really good brand to look into the Oibos. Another product that I'm going to donate into the, uh, you know, to give away to friends and family pile is this cream by Norwegian Formula. So it's the Norwegian Formula Visibly Renew Body Milk. So it's by Neutrogena. And this one, I really just cannot stand the scent of this. It has a very masculine kind of scent. I think it's a very masculine clinical kind of scent. You know, the cream is okay, but you know, like I hate the way my body smells after this. And also I'm getting rid of this one, the um, Le Petit Marseillaise um, Sève d'Aloe Vera and Fleur de Pommier. It's a shower cream. This is again, um, just a scent thing. So I will just donate this to somebody else who likes the scent. I'm, I'm very sensitive to scents. Like if there's a scent that I just don't like, you know, I do get sent a lot of things. If it's just a scent that I don't like, I just won't use the product because I don't like smelling it all day, especially with like shower gels and creams. I can smell them on me all day. And if it's a smell that I don't like, I have to smell that smell all day. Like I have a very, very um, acute and sensitive, uh, sense of smell. So then I also used up one of the Nivea Repair and Care hand creams. This is the SOS. I think it's called SOS. Yeah, SOS hand care. Um, and this cream is really, really good. It's super um, moisturizing. L'Oreal Super Liner Carbon Gloss. This is one of those eyeliners with the felt tip. Um, and this is just dried out. I used this recently in a video and it was just super dried out. There was almost no product coming out anymore, so it's time to throw it out. Another one I'm getting rid of is the Power Volume Collagen Mascara. This again, I'll put in the pile to donate to f friends and family. This is just a super huge, again, mascara wand. I really just don't like these huge wands. I felt like this mascara left a lot of um, smudges, like on the lower lash line especially. And in that same way, I'm getting rid of the Manhattan Supreme Lash Clump Free Volume and Care Mascara. I think this was the same thing with the smudging. It's really hard for me to find mascaras that don't just smudge like crazy. I like the applicator brush on this. It has one of those like spiky um, plastic or rubber wands, but, and it does a really good job of separating and lengthening the mascara, your lashes. But again, the super smudginess, like after a very short time, the mascara was kind of smudged around my eye. And so I just can't, I just can't deal. So another thing I'm super proud of, <laughs> <laughs> I used up two entire things of dental floss. Now to some people that might not be something very amazing, but I have tried to make it a habit to floss regularly since like the beginning of when floss was invented. <laughs> every cavity that I've, I mean, I haven't had like tons of cavity, but every cavity that I've had has always been between teeth because I just didn't floss regularly because I was honestly just plain too lazy. I always brush my teeth like twice a day. I always brush my teeth like that is no problem. But flossing, you know, after the dentist, there'd be like two or three weeks where I'd be flossing really regularly and then it would just kind of like stop. And it's just like stupid, you know? <laughs> I just couldn't make it a habit. I think that's like a lot of people. And for some reason, the last checkup that I had, um, I didn't have any cavities or anything, so I had a good checkup. But she, she basically told me like, if I don't start flossing regularly now, there's like three or four areas where she might have to drill a hole. Like she might have to fix cavities. And I was like, okay, that's gonna be a huge bill. That's gonna be really crappy. So I'm gonna start flossing. And for some reason, just her warning about that and showing me the x-ray of all the places where it was kind of like, you know, at risk. Um, 
it just kind of finally got through to me. And since then, I am happy to report I have flossed regularly and it's been about a year I've been flossing regularly. So I don't floss every single day, I floss every other day. And she said, um, my dentist said that's completely fine, like that's plenty. And I'm so, so proud of myself. Like, gosh, like such a silly thing. But honestly, that's something I've been wanting to get in the habit of since forever. And for some reason, I just was always too lazy and now I'm doing it regularly and I think that this habit will hopefully stick for the rest of my life. And I've also um, been doing f uh, fluoride rinses. Like my freaking tooth um, dental hygiene has just like increased like 200%. So super proud of myself. Speaking of dental, I also used up the Sensitive Professional Toothpaste by Elm Elmex and this is really good if you have sensitive teeth. Um, I've been using this floss and um, the rinse they also make a really good rinse by Elmex for sensitive skin or sensitive teeth and it really really works by the way for the floss i didn't mention this this is the best floss it's the oral b essential what's it called oral b essential floss and i already repurchased this because i tried a few other flosses and this one is so much better because the floss itself is really really thin it doesn't um hurt when you use it super proud of myself <laughs> Okay, I've got a few more products. I used up the Alverde Repair Haarspitzen Fluid. This is a silicone-free hair care product that you're supposed to put in just the ends of your hair to help, um, you know, add a little bit more moisture in there. I don't know. I don't know if I'd repurchase it because anyway, I can't buy this on Switzerland. I bought this in Germany. I might, I might rebuy this next time I'm in Germany. I might get it again. It just, it adds a little bit more moisture on the ends, but it's not like super, super moisturizing. So I'm kind of thinking if it really did a lot, I'm not sure. I also used up the Ico, oh no, I think there's a little bit left in here, but I found a conditioner I like better. This is the Ico System Hakur. So this is a hair treatment. This is again, without silicone. And this was really, really inexpensive. Like I think this bottle was like two francs or something. Um, so the price is really good, but I found a conditioner that I like better by Swiss All Power That's also silicone free that I just feel gives more moisture. So um, I don't think I will be rebuying this um, I also used up one of these makeup sponges God, this is so gross. They're like super dusty um, But this is one of the um, beauty blender dupe sponges by um, Abilene So it's a brand that you can buy at a drugstore in Germany called DM. Oh my god I feel like I have dust all over my face because at the end this stuff has been in here for a while I just used this one today because I have a bunch of them like I stock up whenever I'm in Germany I, I get like five or six of them because they're really cheap I think they're only like three euros or something like that and they're like a really really good copy of the beauty blender I Then I also used up the Bioderma Sensibio light face cream um, This is the soothing cream for sensitive and intolerant skin and absolutely love this. Um, I wish Bioderma was more easily available here. Um, I buy it when I'm in Germany or in France. That micellar water is really popular. I'm honestly not a huge fan of the micellar water, but the creams that they make are just so fantastic and they have a few different ranges. Like they don't have um, a ton of different ranges, but they have enough and they're so good. Like when I'm next time in France, I have to stock up again because these are really awesome, moisturizing, just really good skincare. I feel like French people just really got it on point with their skincare. Uh, I used up also one of the Blistex Classic Lip Protector um, Lip Balms. I This is one of my go-to lip balms. Like I use it all the way down to the end. I feel like this is just such a great lip moisturizer. Okay guys, I feel like that video was super long. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed my little reviews and thank you guys so much for watching and um, I will see you very soon. Bye.